Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and this is Sojourns, where we journey into sewing. And today, it's all about a boxed pleat. I'm gonna give you a Sew You Can tutorial so you can get these beautiful flat boxed pleats on the Monica pleated skirt. Stay with me. Welcome to Sojourns, let's journey into sewing. Today I have another tutorial for you, and it's all about boxed pleats. I've done boxed pleats on garments, but I've also done them on curtains. I'm gonna step over here. You'll see that I have this beautiful sewing balance here, and I did box pleats on that years ago. But let me tell you about the Monica pleated skirt. I sewed up a festive holiday skirt, and this is my first time using the pattern, and I'm really delighted, so I wanna tell you about it. This skirt is by five out of four patterns. That's one of my favorite pattern companies. It has a very inclusive size range. The skirt, as with all of their ladies patterns, come in extra, extra small through 5X. This skirt is for knit fabrics and there's a lot of options. There's three hem lines. There are three or four waistband options, optional tie, and as I put in here, there are optional hidden side seam pockets. So because we're in the holiday season right now, I sewed it up in this gorgeous knit. It doesn't look like a knit, but it is. And it's the shiny gold. I really don't remember the content. I won this fabric at a sewing retreat as part of one of the prizes. And I waited and waited for something, and I think this was the right project for it. And today, starting today, December 18th, the Monica pleated skirt pattern is on sale, on a promo sale, the entire weekend. Friday, Saturday, the 18th through the 20th, so it runs Friday through Monday, $5 for this pattern. That's a great value, because it has, this is the knee length skirt, and I'm gonna show you pictures. There's a midi length skirt and a maxi skirt. There are different waistbands. I used the tall waistband and I did a little special elastic in there hidden that I'm gonna show you about when we do our tutorial. Like I said, it's for knit fabrics and it's actually part of a collection of four skirts. So you can go and you can look at that bundle as well, but this weekend is the real value for this skirt. With the box pleats, you get an option and I'm just gonna see if I can turn this a little bit. You can sew down like I've done here and have your pleats open up about two inches down. I like this look for this particular skirt with this particular fabric. This fabric was a little tricky and I'm gonna show you how I dealt with that in the tutorial. But this gives a very flat top and I think that's really pretty. And there's three. It's hidden under there. There's three different box plates here and the same on the back. So your option is to have them flat and open up two inches down. Or as you're constructing this, as you'll see, you can just baste that box plate for now and then you can open it up so that your pleat starts right at the top of the waistband and comes down. And that's a super cute look too. I love a maxi skirt, as you know, if you follow me. And I will be making definitely this in more casual knit fabrics, you know, double brush poly. ITY would be gorgeous. I love the way that drapes. Single brush poly, whatever, you know, your favorite knit is will work with this. And I'll do it in a more casual look. I may not have the bow on for that. That way I can wear something over it. But for a festive holiday look, this bow is nice and long. I don't know if you can see it in the picture yet, but it's super cute. And I just love the way it came out. So $5 weekend, all the links are in the description box for this and anything you need to know is in there. And thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to this video and my channel. So let's get into our boxed pleat tutorial on the Monica pleated skirt and then join me back after that to see the finished product. I'll do some modeling for you on me so you can see how it sits. Enjoy. Let's talk about marking the pleats on the Monaco pleated skirt by five out of four patterns. I'm doing the knee length skirt and I have that laid out on my fabric on the fold. The fabric that I'm using is a knit fabric 
and it's this very shiny knit, almost like a lame or whatever. And I don't want to put pins in it. I don't know how that would work out. So I have it folded with the right side inside. And I'm going to be marking these pleats on the wrong side of the fabric here. And then I will eventually transfer them to the inside, but it would be slippery. I don't know that it would mark so well. So I think this is the best way. And this is how I'm going to mark these. And I've done one, but I think it's important how you do it. So I'm using my standard little sewing gauge and I'm going to use this roller marker, this chalk marker here. Uh, this is by Clover and it, it's a roller marker and that's the best way to mark this particular fabric. I think if I tried to use Taylor's chalk, which I really like, it would sort of skip, 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 skip. So what I've done is starting from the fold edge, I've measured the length of this pleat, which is two inches and this one's two inches as well. This one's a little bit shorter at one inch. And so what I've done is I've folded over the pattern exactly on that line. I could see through here. So I folded it over here and I've measured two inches and I put my gauge down and I drew it with my roller. So I just rolled that down to two inches. Now it's marked really well and I can see that and I'll be able to transfer that to the other side. And then I will measure over here and see that that first line is three inches. So I'll know when I go to transfer it to the other side since this is cut on the fold. So I'm going to mark three inches here. So I know that that first mark is three inches from the fold. And now I'll go along and do the same thing. I'll come over here and I'll fold it on that line. And I'll make sure my pattern is lined up properly. And again, I will take my roller and I will mark it that way. And I'll go and do every one. I'm going to mark the distance between the lines. I'll measure the distance between the lines carefully, five and a half. And that way, when I go to transfer them to the other side, I'll make sure that I'm accurate. Here's what your pleats will look like after you've marked them on one side. I have all the measurements marked on the top of the pattern. I have the fold mark here and in the center and at the bottom to make sure I fold it properly and along that raw edge. And I'll just transfer those markings to the other side. You need them on the full length of this. This pattern gets cut on the fold twice. So I have to cut another one, mark it exactly the same way. Now let's go through marking, pinning, and sewing down the box pleats. That can be a little tricky. So here I have my front skirt. Remember I cut two on the fold. So here's the front skirt with my markings. Now you take a pin and place it on the fold. So just put it through there at the top where the waist is on the fold. And then you're going to open up your skirt. And don't lose your center pin. Remember I mentioned I didn't want to put pins through this fabric, so I do have it marked, but only at the very top within the seam allowance. And now what you're going to do is place a pin mark at every one of these pleat marks that we made. And I'm going to be very careful about my pins, having it go only to the seam allowance because my fabric is very delicate. So we're working from the right side of the fabric, but my markings are on the wrong side of the fabric. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold our fabric over right sides together at certain points and sew down a pleat. Now here you have a decision to make. When we sew down these pleats, you can either use a basting stitch that you can remove later, or you can use a regular stitch that locks in. The difference is if you want to remove the stitches later, your pleats will start right at the bottom of the waistband or top of this here and open up right away. If you prefer a flatter front, for the first two inches and then have it 
come out, that's when you would use your locking stitches. Either way is correct, it's just a style choice. I do not want to be removing basting stitches from this fabric because it will leave holes. So I will be locking it in and then having a flat two inches here and then having my pleats open up from there. First step is you take pin number one, fold it right sides together so it's on top of pin number three. I'm going to take pin number one and lay it on top of pin number three, just like that. So pin number one is on top of three and then you have this one. I'm going to use a clip to hold it because I do not want to mar my fabric anymore. I'm going to use a couple clips here so that it stays level for me. Now we'll go over to the sewing machine and I'll sew down right here. Now I am going to leave my stitches in like I said, so I need to be very careful as I sew the subsequent pleats that I am exactly stopping where I should be stopping at the two inch mark so that it's even and level on the finished product. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and just, I'm gonna be sewing through both layers just that two inches. As you can see here, I made my first stitches right down here. And now I'm gonna go and make the subsequent stitches. So you're just going to take this next pin, do just like we did here, and you're going to fold it over to the third pin. So we're going to take this pin, lay it on top of the third pin. So it looks just like it did when we did the first one where you'll have a pin in the middle. Take it and I'm going to clip it to hold it and I'm going to do my stitches. Measuring exactly two inches and putting a mark here so I know exactly where to stop my stitches. And then I'll do the same thing with this next one. You bring that over. This pin, put it on top of that pin, and sew down the mark. So here we have our pleats sewn in, sewn straight down from the back, like we did. Okay. The next thing we want to do is make our box pleats. And I've done the first one over here. What you're going to do is take your pleat, make sure I get this on camera here, and remember those little one inch markings we made? There were a lot of two inch markings, that's, that's what we used to sew down. But there's a little one inch marking back here, and that's actually the center of your pleat. So you're going to find that, or if somehow the mark is removed or whatever, you can just take the back here and mark the center. Now you are going to open up the box pleat in the back, and you're going to put that center right in the center of the seam that you just stitched, that two inch mark, right there. And then you're going to press these box pleats here. So I'm going to pin it. And pin it here, right at the raw edge. And then you can press that down. So I've done the first one and the second one, and I'll do the third one. Find the center, there's my mark. Put it right in the center so that the box pleat is equal on both sides and we'll pin that, or clip that actually, right there. There we go. And now you're going to go across each one of these from here to here and just baste the box pleats in place. Or you can just use a regular locking stitch like I did so you do that to the front and the back, and here I've already done it to one of them. And I just did a regular locking stitch within the seam allowance. So this is at a quarter inch, the seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, so I don't have to take those out later. 
this fabric doesn't really want me to do that. And I know it's kind of wiggly and hard to see on camera, but. So go ahead and make your box pleat, iron it, press it nicely, stitch across there, and then we're going to sew, put the front skirt, the back skirt together, and sew down the side seams. So we have our beautiful box pleats sewn, and I did put the pockets in. I decided to put the pockets in, so they go in just before you sew the side seams together. The directions are very clear on that. You've sewn inseam pockets, I'm sure, before. And so I thought, oh yeah, that'd be really cute to have a place to put my hands. So I did go ahead and put the pockets in and I sewed the front and back just down the side seams. So now we really have our skirt completely constructed. For waistbands, you have a choice of a contoured waistband, a tall waistband, a regular waistband. When given the opportunity, I always choose a contoured waistband. Let me grab that. Contoured waistband is a very good waistband if you're curvy, if you have a smaller waist than hips. It's very flattering. It's very comfortable. I always choose that. So here I have done a couple of the steps. These ties are very long and they get in the way. Here's the pattern piece. You cut two of those and then there's the long tie. If you're going to put the tie on, there's an option to have a waist tie. And I thought that would be very pretty on this festive holiday skirt. So you just Cut the tie, fold it wrong side, right sides together, sew down the long ends, turn it like a tube. And then you have this nice end here, very pretty. And then you just take your raw edge and you line it up right here where the mark is. And that's halfway. So you just line it up at the halfway. It's not going to come all the way down because you have a seam allowance that you need to sew the skirt to and you don't want to catch the tie. So I've done that here. I have my two ties. Now I'll put my other piece of the contoured waistband on top and I'll sew these curved edges, being very careful not to catch any of the tie. I'll pin that down. And then you'll turn it out, fold it in half. You'll quarter your skirt, just like it says in the tutorial and attach your waistband. Then you just hem whatever you want to do with your hem. You want to do a rolled hem? Do you want to do it on your cover stitch? Do you want to do it on your straight stitch machine? I am going to put clear elastic at the top of the waistband because this doesn't have a lot of recovery. And I want to make sure as I wear it that it stays nice and close. When I get to that step, I'll come back and show you. So here I have my contoured waistband sewn together on the sides. So there's two pieces. I was careful not to get my ties in the way. And you can see I've marked the center on both sides. And then I have marked some X's down here. These X's are going to be the inside waistband, the part that's actually against my body. And then this side the ties are coming out of will be on the outside, of course. So as I told you, I like to put clear elastic in my waistband. This waistband is smaller than the circumference of the skirt, so we will be stretching it to fit. But I wanna make sure that that stays nice and close to the smallest part of my waist. So I just take clear elastic. This is the same elastic I use to stabilize shoulder seams. And make sure when you use this, you just pull it once or twice to exercise it. And I'm going to lay it on this side of the line, right up against the line, but towards the inside waistband. And I'm just going to stitch it using a zigzag stitch. I'll take it to my sewing machine and I'll stitch all the way around. Now, of course, you have to use your free arm and do it like this. So I'll come here and I'll stitch it just like this with a zigzag right through here. So then when I fold that waistband over, it will be enclosed at the top of the waistband, but on the side without the ties. Here I am at the sewing machine using the free arm. 
This is the side that's going to be on the inside. This is my clear elastic. I leave the elastic on the roll because I am not stretching this to fit. The elastic is not shorter than the waistband. It's the exact same size. So I have a zigzag stitch and I've done the first couple of stitches so it'll hold while I show you this. And I'm going to keep it on this side of the X mark waistband right along that yellow on the inside and I'm just going to zigzag it on. I'm holding no tension, no stretching. I'm just guiding. Normally I would sew from the other side. It's easier with my hand. I'll do a few more here for you. There we go. So see I'm in one layer and I'm just going to keep going all the way around. Here's an up close of my waistband with the clear elastics sewn to the inner waistband. So now what you'll do is open these seams up, fold wrong sides together. And when you do that and you put this together, you don't see the elastic on the right side of the waistband. It's only on the side that's against your skin. Here we have our last step before hemming and we'll be done. So I have the waistband clipped onto the skirt. I quartered the waistband, I quartered the skirt, and I made sure that the right side of the waistband, that is the one with the ties and the one without the elastic is facing the skirt. Those are right sides together. So when I flip it up, that will be in the back. The ties will come to the front. And you do that all the way around and you will be stretching your waistband a little bit, just like a normal waistband will be. Let's just clip that right there. You'll be stretching that in between your clips. And then we'll come back and look at our beautiful holiday skirt. I'm really pleased with the way the Monica pleated skirt came out. It's comfortable, it's fancy, has hidden pockets if you want. I like the way it moves. I love the flat waistband here, and I love the way that these box pleats are flat here and then gently open out. Of course, you can choose to have them open at the very top, but I really like this with the sweet bow. I do feel like this really festive holiday skirt is pretty. And I will be making a maxi skirt in a more casual fabric for every day or for whatever. So there you go. I'm really pleased with it. This is my first time sewing up this pattern, so I give it two thumbs up. I recommend it. I think it fit well. This is my exact size. I did not have to do any blending because it is a fuller skirt, but I think it looks really great. And you saw that I put clear elastic in the waist, and that is the ticket. I really find that that makes it stay where I want it to stay. It makes it very comfortable. This fabric doesn't have a lot of recovery, so that was really important. It also lets you choose different fabrics if you do that. But I do that for all my leggings and all my skirt patterns that are similar to this. So whether you try it for holiday or you try it for every day, wouldn't it be really cute in the springtime? This length in a, in a floral, in a, in a lighter, flowier fabric, that would be a really lovely in the spring too. Definitely a year-round skirt. If you make this skirt, let me know. If you make boxed pleats, curtains, clothing, whatever you do it on, I'm glad we did something together today. Happy sewing.